Now let us continue with the logical deductions. Our first, of course, is the jar can't be a horse, can't be a donkey, has to be a human being. All right? Banu Israel are in Babylon. Is Babylon in the United States? Or is it in France? Where is it? In Iraq. Good, mashallah. We're making progress tonight. <laughs> But who is Raila in Babylon? And the Holy Land, where Holy Israel was located, is now under pagan Babylonian rule. But if the Messiah is to rule the world from the throne of Nabi Dawood, he'll have to rule the world from Jerusalem. He'll have to rule the world from a holy state of Israel. Okay? So the Jews deduced that the first thing that the Messiah would have to do would be to liberate the Holy Land for the Jews. Because it's now under Babylonian rule and the Babylonians worship the stars and the moon and the idols and so on. So number one, he'll have to liberate the Holy Land for the Jews. Number two. <coughs> now don't ask me which hadith did you read this in. Because I just told you these are logical deductions. And if you can't follow my logical deduction, go and play cricket or football or do something else. Don't waste your time with me. Number two. You have to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Number three, he would have to restore the holy state of Israel in the holy land. Number four, he'd have to cause that holy state of Israel <coughs> to become once again the ruling state of the world. These are the four major things you have to do. You may wish to add one more if you want. And that is the masjid that was built by Suleiman alayhi salam. They call it the Temple of Solomon. We call it Masjid al-Aqsa. That masjid was destroyed by the Babylonian army. <coughs> So he's going to have to build the masjid. Okay? Okay. This is what the Messiah will have to do. <coughs> it follows therefrom that the false Messiah will have to do the same thing. Huh? If he is to successfully impersonate the true Messiah, and convince the Jews that he is the true Messiah, he will have to liberate the Holy Land for the Jews. He will have to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Number three, he will have to restore the state of Israel in the Holy Land. Number four, he will have to cause that Israel to become once again, the ruling state in the world. Don't ask me which hadith are in it, eh? Because these are logical deductions. Because I have people asking me, particularly those who call themselves the, my brothers, and they are my brothers, the Salafi. <coughs> Sheikh Imran, which hadith did you read that in? So, brother, why don't you go and play football or something? Don't bother me. <laughs> No bother me, go play football. You can't understand this. Good. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam said that when the child is released by Allah into the world, 
he would live on earth for how long? 40 days. One day which would be like a year. One day which would be like a month. One day which would be like a week. And all his days like your days. All his days like your days. Meaning all his days, meaning all the rest of his days, like your days. Okay, if anybody has come now, don't let them in. <laughs> Not allowed to come late. <coughs> Good. <coughs> one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and all his days like your days. Is it possible for us to be on earth and to live in a day which is like a year? Is it possible? Has there ever been in human history any prophet of Allah, any Muslim, anyone who has experienced living on earth in a day which has lasted for a year? or more than a year. Huh? I don't know where you all come from, but I have never experienced anyone. I know of no one. I know of no prophet of Allah. None, 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 none. Who has experienced such a thing? I know that every single prophet of Allah, okay, lived in a world in which the sun rose in the morning and the sun set in the evening. And the day and the night combined to make a day. And that's how it's always been since Allah created the world. Well then where would this day be which is like, like a year? If you believe that somewhere in the North Pole or the South Pole or somewhere on the earth there is a day which is like a year, go and play football. <laughs> and don't waste my time. Because I'm growing impatient now. I'm impatient with this methodology. So don't waste my time. If you choose to believe that, go ahead and believe it. And just leave me alone with my students. We have a different way of such approaching the subject. We said, are there angels on the earth? I mean apart from your wives. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yes, each one of us has two angels. Do these angels live in our world of space and time? Are these angels subjected to day and night and so on? No. No. They are on earth most certainly, but they are not in our world of time. So we are making progress now while you play football. Are there jinn on earth? I don't know how many you have in Brunei, but I know there are lots of them in Washington. <laughs> Can you, can you see the jinn? Are the jinn subject to the same day and night that we are subject to? No. So the jinn are here on earth, but not in our world of space and time, not our day. Their day is not like our day. And so only five ringlets worth of intelligence. That's all we needed. And we are making progress to understand the Hadith. So now we know. Are there other worlds of space and time beside this? But that's how the Quran starts. He it is who has subjected to you all that is on the earth. 
ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع السماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم. This is the beginning of the Quran. That Allah first created the material universe. The word Ard, the word Ard can mean land, like Ard al Muqaddasa, holy land. The word Ard can mean earth. And the word earth can mean material universe, all three meanings. So after Allah created the material universe, this world of space and time, He then created or fashioned seven more worlds of space and time. The summer what? Okay. And beyond the seven is his arch, or the command center. The command center is arch. And these worlds of space and time differ from each other. The Quran says that there is a day with Allah which is like a thousand years of your counting. The Quran says that there is a day which is Allah which is like 50,000 years of your counting. So, the Samawat differ from each other. <coughs> so, the Dajjal is released on earth, but yet, he's not in the material universe. The angels are on earth, but they're not in our world of space and time. So the Dajjal can be here. And in the same way that the angels are here and we can't see them. Similarly, the Dajjal can be here and we can't see him. Okay? Is it possible For someone who is in another world of space and time, like the angels, to appear in material form, the human being? Yes. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Did you make a mistake, no Chaitari for you. <laughs> okay, give me an example. Give me an example. I oh, know, let me ask you to take first. There can be a... Someone in another world of space and time, but can appear in our world of space and time as a human being. Give me an example. Jibreel come to... MashaAllah, so take Tariq for him. <laughs> Jibreel alayhi salam is an angel. An angel. <coughs> but he came in the masjid in the form of a human being, <coughs> okay? And came and sat in front of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Give me an example of a jinn. <coughs> Who can give me an example of a jinn? Don't tell me George Bush, huh? Jim, <laughs> <coughs> please. Iblis, the Quraysh met in a meeting to decide what to do about Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam because they couldn't tolerate his presence anymore. And an old man in a walk with a walking stick entered and joined the meeting. And when this one said, let's kill him, and that one said, let's do this, and that, he said, no, 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 no. And then when one old person said, let one man from each tribe surround his house. And as he comes out, all will jump on him. So no tribe would be a day by itself. So Banu Hashim would have to accept compensation. Huh? Then the old man said, that's the plan. And Nabi Muhammad said he was Iblis. 
who came in the form of a human being. And so although the jar is in another world of space and time, the jar can appear in our world as a human being because the angel did it, the jinn did it. So now we say that the jar will first have to passage three stages of his life, three stages, while he is here on earth, before we will see him as a human being. And only when he has completed those three stages of his life, then in the very last part of his life, which is only a few days long, only then would we see him as a human being. <coughs> the fellows who are playing football outside, they are waiting for the Dajjal to appear as a human being. And only when he appears as a human being would his mission commence. Prior to that, there is no Dajjal in the world. So his day like a year will commence when he is on earth like a human being. And his day like a month and the day like a week will continue and he's somewhere on earth. So we say no. You can't see him in a day like a year. You can't see him in a day like a month. You can't see him in a day like a week. But you only see him when his day is like our day. But at that time, he'll be in Jerusalem, ruling the world in Jerusalem. Now, if he has this mission to accomplish, to rule the world from Jerusalem, my gosh, how will a little state of Israel rule the world? That's a tall order. In order for Israel to rule the world, Israel will first have to rule the Arabs, because Israel is surrounded by Arabs. How will little Israel rule the Arabs? Eh? How will Israel rule Russia and China? This is an extremely difficult thing. The Prophet said about the child, that he would come with two things, a river and a fire. But his fire would be the cool waters of his river. <laughs> and his river will be the fire. In this hadith, the fire symbolizes Jahannam and the river symbolizes Jannah. So Dajjal, <coughs> which is with his PhD in deception, would take the road to Jannah and present it as the road to Jahannam. And he'd re take the road to Jahannam and make it look like the road to Jannah. He does that every night on television. Hmm. He takes the road to Jahannam and makes it look like the road to Jannah. And he takes the road to Jannah and makes it look like the road to Jannah. He takes the truth and clothes it with the clothing of falsehood. And he takes falsehood and makes it look like truth. So he is the master of deception. The Prophet said that Islam was found that Dajjal will get people to worship him instead of Allah. He's already doing that. A very famous scholar 
Islam in Pakistan, I won't mention his name. I have great respect for that man. Even as an old man and an outstanding scholar, that man was still waiting for someone to claim that he is God. So the child said, the child will claim to be God. When I told him, but the child is already doing that. Couldn't understand. Couldn't understand. The child uses a number of weapons. Political weapons. Economic weapons. For example, the Prophet said that the age of the child will be the age of Kathra to Riba. You knew Riba. <coughs> to reduce all those who oppose him to poverty and destitution. And all those who support him will be on the gravy train, driving BMWs and, you know, the gravy train, driving for scrap. The child also will attack women. The last people to come out of the child will be women. And a man would have to return to his home, his family, and tie them down, his wife, his sister, his daughter, to protect them from the job. And so a revolution in the world of women, a feminist revolution will come with the job. But we want to return now to what we mentioned about the three stages. Do we have any indication when the jar is released on earth in its first stage? Where will his headquarters be? From which part of the earth will he, will he launch his attack? Although we can't see him. Yes, we do. I now want to introduce you to the hadith known as the hadith of Tamim al-Dari in Sahih Muslim, a hadith of pivotal importance. We don't need to look to see whether the hadith is Sahih or Daif or reliable or unreliable because it's Sahih Muslim. We, are, we don't have any work to do there. The hadith is that Tamim al-Dari was a Christian, took the shahada, became a Muslim in Medina, and came to the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam, and narrated an event to him. The Prophet alayhi salatu waslam listened to him. And then the Prophet Islam asked the people to sit in the masjid. He says, I have something to say to you. The Mimul Dari came to me and gave me the news of this event about the Jal, which confirms what I have been saying to you. The narration does not tell us whether it's a dream, or whether it's a vision, or whether it was an actual event. No, you've got to use your own intelligence now. And here is the event. Tamim Adari and some 40 of his companions went on board a ship. If you are in the Arab world and you go on board a ship, you either be in the Mediterranean Sea, from the Holy Land, or you be in the Red Sea, from Arabia. Okay. <coughs> and a storm came and blew the ship for a whole month, so we eliminate the Red Sea. If you're in the Red Sea and a storm comes, within one hour you'll be on ground. <laughs> Not a whole month. So there's only one left, the Mediterranean Sea. After one month, the ship reached land, okay? And it was an island, an island. A 
uh, now there are a number of clues which are given by which you can seek to identify the island. Is it possible from the Mediterranean Sea to go to the United States by ship? Oh, come on. Yes. American ships? Hundreds of American ships over the last 200 years leaving the United States to come and trade with Tripoli and Algiers and Cairo. How did they get into the Mediterranean Sea? There's a passageway at Gibraltar. Okay. They've been there for thousands of years. Good. Which is this island? They got off the ship and they went on shore and they were confronted by a very hairy creature. So much hair. You could not tell which side was head and which side was tail. Much like in lower Manhattan, sometimes you can't tell who is a man and who is a woman. <laughs> and then the beast began to speak. and said, I am just Sansa. The word is in the Quran. Wala tajassasu do not spy. Do not spy. Don't do work for the FBI against your own people and every month you're getting a check from the FBI. Lord, let me not say for that. Do not spy. So, <coughs> this creature is a specialist in spying, just as that. And this creature conceals his true identity. Meaning that the Hadith is telling us that this is an island with specialization in spying and espionage and that this is an island with people who conceal their true identity okay shall we call the azan and then continue and perform salat and then continue yes. huh? okay let me just finish it and we Yasasa then said to him, the Mimudarian, pointing to a monastery which was lying in ruins. So we know that this is an island in which religion will eventually collapse. And he said, there's someone waiting to see you there. So they rushed because they wanted to get away from him. And when they reached to the monastery which was lying in ruins, they found this man who was in chains. His hands were chained to his neck and his feet were chained. And he began to question them, who are you, where are you from? And they said, we are Arabs. And he asked, has that Arab prophet come as yet who does not read and write and who is not a Jew? They said, yes. Are the people following him? They said, some are and some are not. He said, it is better for them to follow him. He asked, is there any water left in the Sea of Galilee? They said, plenty. He said, it's not going to last for long. And then he said, I am the Dajjal. And when I am released, for up this moment he's not released, I will enter every town and every city where he didn't mention Campo. <laughs> I will enter every town and every city. So we know from this hadith, that when the Dajjal is released on earth, 
in a day which is like a year. <coughs> it is from this island that he will commence his mission to rule the world eventually from Jerusalem. And we ask the question, and it is a legitimate question to ask, which island is it? When we give an answer, we say, this is our opinion. You don't have to accept it. Okay? But if you say we are wrong, you must tell us, you must tell us what is right. Otherwise you can't say we are wrong. So <coughs> this form Salat, and mashallah Yasin recites beautifully, and then we come back to continue. We narrated to you the hadith which is known as the hadith of Tamim Dari, in which an island was mentioned. And we then attempted to identify that island. <coughs> that we would know that when the jar is released on earth in a day which is like the year, it is from that island that he will commence his mission to eventually rule the world from Jerusalem while making Israel the ruling state in the world. And we ask which island is it? And we found, number one, that this would be an island about one month's journey by sea from the Arab world. Number two, that it would be an island with expertise in spying and espionage. And it would conceal its true identity. Number three, that it would be an island in which religion will eventually crumble because the monastery is lying in ruins. And number four, it will have to be an island with a special relationship to the Holy Land in order to qualify. Because that's the mission, to rule the world with the Holy Land. I have given the answer in my book, Jerusalem in the Quran. And uh, incidentally, I have, I think, 30 copies of Jerusalem in the Quran, which have already arrived uh, in Brunei, and we should get them tomorrow. Uh, that Jerusalem in the Quran in English. And then there is Jerusalem in the Quran translated to Basa. We sent a hundred copies by ship. Should have arrived in Brunei yet I'm not hearing about it. So do please make sure you get a copy and read that book. In Jerusalem in the Quran, I identified the islands as written. But whenever I give my opinion, opinion, whenever I give my opinion, I always insist that no one should accept my view or my opinion, unless and until you are convinced that it is correct. I can't do more than that. So this is my view, the island of Britain. Where is the evidence to support my claim? As evidence, I will point to the fact that it was the island of Britain which in 1917, October or November 1917, issued what is known as the Balfour Declaration, which set the stage for what we now have today. That it is the intention of the British government 
to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. There you are. A pain as the sunshine. This island has to be Britain. Number two, it was a British army which defeated the Turkish Ottoman Islamic Empire Army in 1917, November, and liberated the Holy Land for the Jews. <coughs> the British general, whose name was General Allenby, when he entered Jerusalem as the head of this triumphant army, declared, today the Crusades have ended. Yeah. Number three, that it was Britain which ruled over the Holy Land from 1918 to 1948, the successor to the Ottoman Islamic Empire. And during that period of 30 years, allowed the Jews to return to the Holy Land. Number four, it was Britain which in 1948 presided over the birth of the State of Israel. I don't think that Singapore qualifies. <laughs> no. I don't think that the island of Borneo qualifies. No. I don't think there's any other island in the world that qualifies as bitterness. And so I came to the conclusion that when Dajjal was released on earth in a day which is quite a year, that it was from Bitten that he commenced his efforts <coughs> to fulfill his mission of impersonating the true Messiah. <coughs> I noticed that during that time when a day like a year was in progress, I noticed as a student of international relations that Britain became the ruling state in the world. And this was, this was symbolized in an expression which is coined, Pax Britannica. Pax Britannica. Britain ruled the world. <coughs> I noticed that there were no aircraft at that time and wars were fought on land and on sea. But to control the sea was strategically more important than the land. <laughs> and that Britain controlled every single, every single strategically important naval port in the whole world. Okay? This thing cannot be by accident. I noticed that Britain and Europe gained a military superiority over the rest of the world through a scientific and technological revolution which when applied to military science gave a military power that the rest of the world could not match. You have one army out there with cruise missiles and helicopter gunships and you have another army over here with bows and arrows. Huh? They no match. No match at all. So a preponderant military superiority because of a scientific and technological revolution, which is still proceeding. And I noticed that Britain was the originator and the heart of the scientific and technological revolution. I noticed also that Britain ruled the world of money. 
when Britain was the ruling state. And Britain created a bank called the Bank of England. And then Britain started issuing paper money. <coughs> paper money. That previously you had a British sterling pound, which was a gold coin. And then now you now have a British sterling pound, which is made of paper. And I noticed that the same scheme was used to rip off people. As soon as the, Brit the Bank of England was established, within a few years, this, this Ponzi scheme <coughs> collapsed because the paper was bogus. I noticed that Britain maintained and still maintains to this day an inexplicable obsession with the Holy Land. Yeah. The former British Prime Minister Tony Blair is still very active after having retired <coughs> as Prime Minister on behalf of Israel. So, I then asked myself, well, how long did a day, a day like a year last? And when will a day like a month commence? And the answer is, when Britain no longer rules the world. When did that happen? And I found that <coughs> in 1914, in 1914, an act of terrorism similar to 9-11 took place. The assassination of the France Duke, the, the Austrian Duke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. And that assassination triggered off a chain of events which culminated in the First World War. <coughs> The First World War, in, in turn, brought about the collapse and disintegration of the Ottoman Islamic Empire. And the First World War brought about the destruction of Muslim rule over the Holy Land, Britain taking over. But by 1917, Germany was winning the war. Germany had introduced a new weapon of war. What was it? Submarine. Submarine. Submarine is correct. Why are you afraid to say it? Submarine. And the submarines had surrounded Britain. And Britain was marooned. And Britain had food to last for probably two weeks. Britain would have to surrender. And then the Jews got the United States to enter the war. And from the time the United States entered the war, the United States was able to save Britain <coughs> from defeat. But now it was clear. If I had to save you from defeat, you were no longer the ruling state in the world. So the United States has taken over, or is taking over from Britain. The process of taking over may take years. So I concluded that the United States is now the headquarters and the Dal is now in a day which is like a month. And during this period of time I find that the aircraft has now been introduced into warfare. And in the same way that Britain controlled every single naval port in the world, the United States now has 700 military bases all over the world. <coughs> Why would the United States, and only the United States, establish 700 military bases all over the world? There has to be an explanation. In the same way as why would Britain establish a naval port in every single strategic location in the whole world? What is it that explains? You cannot answer these questions with normal tools of political analysis from the universities. Forget it. That's a waste of time. 
You can only answer these questions if you go to a man named Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But they don't teach this in the Darul Ulum. No. <laughs> they don't teach it in Al-Azhar University. How to use the Ahadith to understand and explain political realities, economic realities in the world. They don't teach that. No. I noticed that the United States takes over for Britain as the military power in the world. And the United States controls the sky. Every single aircraft constructed in the world today, 90% or 80% of the commercial aircraft that you buy are from the United States, Boeing, <coughs> number one, and, and the other companies. And maybe the French are producing some aircraft, but they don't compete. Uh, the Russians and Chinese are producing some aircraft, but they already compete. And every airline in the world that wants to be competitive <coughs> is buying mostly American aircraft. <laughs> right? So in the same way that Britain controls the sea, the United States controls the air. I noticed that the United States takes over the cutting edge of the scientific and technological revolution. Britain has not sent any man up to the moon, although I understand that's a lie, they didn't do it. But send spacecraft, okay, up into the sky. The cutting edge of, of space technology today is the United States, not Britain. No. The scientific and technological revolution moved from Britain to the United States. And then finally I noticed that the United States took over the world of money. <coughs> Britain no longer ruled the world of money, the sterling pound was no longer the international currency. And London was no longer the financial capital of the world. Now all of these things are observations. You have to observe, you will. You're not going to find this in a hadith, eh? You've got to observe what's happening around you and then tie it up with the Hadith. The US dollar replaces the sterling pound. And finally, I noticed that the United States is the midwife supporting Israel in every single thing. Every single thing the United States supporting Israel. A mysterious obsession with Israel. No American poly politician dares to criticize Israel. <coughs> because if you criticize Israel, that is the end of a political career. Huh? And so Israel controls the United States. <laughs> so I came to the conclusion that when the child was in a day which is like a month, the United States was in headquarters. And then I came to the conclusion ten years ago when I wrote Jerusalem in the Quran that there are unmistakable signs that the United States are now, is now in a state of decline. And that the day which is like a month is coming to an end. And so ten years ago that book was published saying that the day like a week is soon to commence and that a new state will emerge to replace the United States. The United States will collapse. <coughs> the US dollar will collapse. It will bring down all the paper money in the world with it. And in the same way that Britain was on the verge of military defeat, and the United States had to intervene to save it, so too the United States will have to be on the verge of military defeat and Israel will have to intervene to save it. And that will mark the transfer of power. Maybe within the next two or three months we should see the attack on Iran. Israeli attack on Iran. The United States did not want Iran to be attacked. Because the United States knows an attack on Iran is going to lead eventually to world war. And the United States doesn't want to fight Russia. <laughs> the United States much prefers to fight Libya. <laughs> oh, yes. 
and Afghanistan and Iraq and so on, but not Russia. No, because if you get Ru if you fight Russia, you won't get busted up. All the American cities are going to be lying in ashes. Yeah, they don't have. And the Russians are not going to spare you. No, they'll treat you the same way you treat the Afghans. So the United States does not want Iran to be attacked. Because it knows that an attack on Iran is going to lead to war eventually with Russia. But Israel wants the attack on Iran. So now the United States is doing all it can to try to prevent the attack on Iran. And guess what the Zionists are doing now in the House of Representatives? They are passing a resolution in the American Congress to prevent the President of the United States from talking to Iran. To prevent the U.S. government from talking to Iran. To prevent all American government agencies from having any kind of a contact with Iran. In other words, they're putting back Barack Obama <coughs> in handcuffs. The President of the United States is paralyzed. He can do nothing. Who, reign, who controls the United States now? Is it the government or the Zionists? Zionists. Yes. Yes. So the attack is coming. When the attack does come, among the many things that are going to happen from the attack on Iran, is that there's going to be clear transfer of power from the United States to Israel. I don't want to keep you for another two hours yet tonight. <laughs> so I'm cutting out a lot of analysis, plenty. <coughs> when Israel takes over from the United States as a ruling state of the world, or if Israel is to take over from the United States as a ruling state of the world, you need more then bring the United States to the verge of military defeat and then intervene to help the United States to get away from defeat. You also have to establish Israeli political and economic dominion over the Arabs because no Jew will accept that you're ruling the world if you're not ruling the Arabs. So now you'll be able to see while they're playing football out there, let them play football. The Arab Spring has come, prepared the way for the Arab slaughter. There are Arabs who cannot understand that. And they're writing furious emails to me. <coughs> Sheikh Imran, we respect you, but you are wrong on this. This is now the moment of victory. The Arabs are emerging. And the Khilafah is now going to be restored. Huh? That's their thinking. And I'm saying no. Run. And we don't have long to wait to know who is right and who is wrong. We don't have long to wait. So I'm not going to engage in any debate with you. The Arab Spring is meant to prepare the way for the Arab slaughter. The Arabs will be decimated by Israel and by NATO. And uh, when you look at the state of the ulama in the Arab world today, you will see <laughs> that they are in a pathetic state. If you are scholars of Islam and you cannot even recognize the paper money to be an instrument created by the enemy to rip you off eh? and reduce you to poverty and destitution, that the paper money is bogus, is fraudulent, is utterly haram, you're not supposed to be a scholar. Go and drive a bus somewhere now and that's not scholarship. Eh? If you are scholars, you're supposed to be able to have capacity to think. The farmer is in the field. He doesn't have the time. You can't expect the farmer in the field to be a scholar. 
He is busy with his work in the field. The businessman is busy with his business. Where are the thinkers? Where are the scholars? <coughs> Every society needs scholars. Otherwise you don't have a pilot for the ship. The ship is going to shipwreck. And that's the state, pathetic state of the Arab ulama today. That they're beating the drums and clapping over the death of Gaddafi and the destruction of the Libyan government. <coughs> not recognizing that he's the Zionist who did it. And that the new government in Libya is a Zionist government controlled by the Zionists. Huh? So, <coughs> when the attack on Iran, which takes place within probably another two months or so, three months, a chain of events will follow. The world is going to be completely different from what it is now. Completely different. And Israel eventually takes over from the United States as the next ruling state in the world. At that time, when Israel rules the world, Israel has to control money. Because Britain control money. The United States control money. So what's the new money going to be? Answer, electronic money. The banking system controls money. No government can issue money anymore because there's no printing press for money anymore. It's all electronic. So the banking system controls all the money in the world, not governments. And Israel controls the banking system. The Jews control the banking system. Hmm. When Israel has ruled the world for a day which is like a week, I don't know how long that's going to be. I can make a guess, maybe 20, 25 years, but I can be wrong. At the end of that will come a man about whom we began who will stand up in Israel and declare I am the Messiah. We, you and I will recognize him. This is the job. This is the job. The Jews and the Christians who are Zionists will not recognize him. They say this is the Messiah. Okay? So they will be deceived. But well, what about the fellas playing football out there? Did you join? You get on I don't know. They say no, he's not Dajjal. <laughs> we will say he is Dajjal. And they will say no, he's not Dajjal. Why? Because they're busy playing football. Because the Prophet said that Dajjal will ride on a donkey. And the donkey will travel as fast as the cloud. It will be a flying donkey. And the donkey will travel, the donkey will have wings stretched out wide. And the donkey will travel <coughs> as fast as the clouds. Okay? So those who are playing football are going to be waiting for a flying donkey. And unless and until they see the flying donkey, they will say, he is not the job. We use a different methodology. We recognize this as religious symbolism. And we recognize the flying donkey to be the aircraft. Okay? The Prophet said that the Jal will step into the ocean and the water will reach him up to his knee. So the fellas playing football are going to ask this fellow to step in the ocean. And let's see how, how far the water is going to reach you. Okay? In order for the water to reach him up to his knee, this man has to be what, one mile tall. Huh? No human being is one mile tall. We say, no, this is religious symbolism. This symbolizes the technology with which he is able to go down to the bottom of the ocean and pick up things as though the water is reaching him to his knee. The first playing football, we say, the Prophet said that the child will be jumping between the heavens and the earth. So they say, come on, let's see you jump. <laughs> 
And we say, no, this is religious symbolism. Jumping between the heavens and the earth symbolizes the technology for travel in space, the shuttle, for example, going up and down. But now let's take the one who takes the cake. The Prophet said that Dajjal sees with his left eye. He is blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one eye. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word Kafir. And every mu'min will be able to read Kafir. Whether that mu'min is katib or ghayr or katib, whether he is literate or illiterate, he still be able to read. So the fellow playing football, I'm going to say, he sees with two eyes. <laughs> He's not one eye. He cannot possibly be the job. And we say, but he is the job. Because the one eye is symbolism. When the Prophet said that he sees with his left eye, the left eye symbolizes external sight. And when the Prophet said that he is blind in the right eye, the blind right eye symbolizes internal blindness. And the reason why the mukmin can read, but the kafir cannot read eh? on his forehead. It's because the mukmin is not reading with his eyes. He's reading with the internal eye. And the reason why the kafir cannot read, not because something wrong with his eyes, you don't have to send him to the eyes, especially if you don't <laughs> No, nothing wrong with his eyes. <coughs> he cannot read it because he's internally blind. So there is a tremendous test of methodology here. Ours and theirs. I call that the flying donkey methodology. <laughs> the flying donkey because they insist on a literal interpretation of every hadith, okay? Today, they are usually the Salafi. And I have, alhamdulillah, students of mine who are Salafi. And I have students of mine who are Sufi. And they're both my students. Because I'm able to embrace them all in one jama. That methodology cannot crack open <laughs> the subject of the Jal. Not at all. When the Jal declares that he is the Messiah, at that time Allah will cause Imam al Mahdi to emerge. At that time he will attack the Imam. At that time Nabi Isa Islam will return. At that time, the Isa Islam will kill the child, and when he is killed, he passes into non-existence. Yeah, because he does not have to be raised for judgment, huh? To be judged by Allah and to be rewarded or punished? No, because he was created for this mission. And when that mission is completed, he passes into non-existence. So he's not a human being. But he will appear in the form of a human being. Fellas playing football can't understand that. They cannot understand, they will not accept that. After the child has been destroyed, killed, at that time a Muslim army will then liberate the Holy Land and the truth will triumph in the Holy Land and history will end with the triumph of truth over falsehood and justice over oppression and tyranny. Hmm? This has been a brief 
introduction to Dajjal. If I were to give you the complete subject, we'd be here for the whole night. <laughs> the whole night. Okay? I have left out critically important parts of the subject. The part pertaining to riba. The Jal is the master of the Exception. modern economy. The banking system has come from the Jal. The Jal is the author of the monetary system, the paper money. The Jal is the author or the architect of the electronic money system. The Jal is the architect of the modern state, which claims sovereignty. Where previously Allah was recorded, was recognized as sovereign. The farmer in the land, in the field, plowing his field, he knows A to Z, nothing about this. The businessman <coughs> selling in the market, he knows nothing about this. You can't expect him to do the political analysis. The scholars have to do it. <laughs> and they have failed. That the modern state which has emerged out of Europe is built on the foundation of shit. Shit. And all these so-called Islamic parties are the one in Tunisia that just won the election. And the ones in Egypt that are going to win elections next month. And the one in Kalantan. And the ones in Pakistan and so on. The Islamic parties, political parties, functioning within the embrace of the secular state. Have you no sense? Have you no sense? <laughs> Maulana Mauduri Rahimahullah May Allah bless him, he was a great man, but he started it. A monstrous, monumental mistake to take the Islamic movement and transform it into a political party and fight elections and form alliances with all kinds of Dajjals. <laughs> the modern feminist revolution has come from Dajjal. Oh yes, all of these things are from Dajjal. So I've left out all of that from the lecture just to give you the 